Here are the top stories for today, May 30, 2022. Cabinet officials showcase the government's achievements as throughout President Rodrigo Duterte's term in the Duterte Legacy Summit. More hospitals prepare for the possible outbreak of monkeypox. The Philippines backs the worldwide call for safe and healthy workplaces. Regional police chiefs are urged to boost security following the recent bombings in Region 12. Good day, I'm Marita Moahe. Welcome to the PNA Newsroom. Officials of the Duterte administration showcased the government's achievements throughout President Rodrigo Duterte's term in a two-way summit at the Philippine International Convention Center. The Duterte Legacy Summit wraps up a two-year information drive by the Presidential Communications Operations Office promoting the landmark programs and achievements of the Duterte administration. Cabinet officials will present to the public their accomplishments, policies, and projects that improved the lives of Filipinos over the past six years. PCO Secretary and Acting Presidential Spokesperson Martin Andanar said the event will thank and recognize the tapang at malasakit governance of President Duterte, his cabinet, and all public servants. It will also feature key campaign promises of the Duterte administration that were realized such as the Universal Healthcare Law and Malasakit Center, Universal Access to Quality Tertiary Education, Bangsamoro Organic Law, Anti-Illegal Drugs Campaign, and Migrant Workers Protection. The Duterte administration was able to establish the needed change that Filipinos deserve. This was stressed by Executive Secretary Salvador Mediadea during the Duterte Legacy Summit held this morning. Medialdea said that for the past years, the Duterte government has been determined to bring real and lasting change to the lives of every Filipino. He said that despite the effects of the COVID-19 pandemic, the Philippines has managed to bounce back to a better financial status. Medialdea also cited the continuous implementation of the Build, Build, Build program that connects not only countries' islands, but more importantly, the Filipino people. The executive secretary likewise said that the Duterte government has provided the basic needs and more to every Filipino by ensuring accessible health care, guaranteeing free college education in all state universities and colleges, and assuring every Filipino security by restoring peace and order and reducing the proliferation of illegal drugs. Knowing that the administration has done well, Six years of borrowed time proved not enough to fully enjoy his unconventional but very effective style of leadership that the world has not seen before. Some were shocked, others lost for words, but all in agreement that this is the kind of leadership we as a nation needed. Every program and project have been made to ensure that we give a more comfortable and dignified life for everyone. The Duterte administration has secured the country's territorial integrity and sovereignty as well as its vast maritime borders through new equipment and patrols. In his presentation at the Duterte Legacy Summit today, Defense Secretary Delphine Lorenzana said nearly 7,000 naval surface and maritime air patrols each were held to assert the country's sovereignty. Lorenzana said the Philippines signed in 2016 a trilateral cooperative arrangement with Malaysia and Indonesia, which helped cut down incidents of terrorism and criminal activities in the Sulu Celebes Seas. Improvements in structures include the construction of a beaching ramp in Pagasa Island and the repair of its airstrip, apart from improving structures in parts of the Kalayan Islands group. They also acquired new equipment to strengthen humanitarian assistance, disaster response and defense, along with joint command and control capabilities such as air assets, 
radars and missile systems. Lorenza said the Philippines was able to respond to violations of its sovereignty and sovereign rights, conduct marine scientific research, and aid fishermen in maritime territories. Almost 90 billion pesos worth of narcotics were seized by authorities since the launching of the illegal drugs campaign. Data from the real numbers shows that a total of 89.29 billion pesos worth of narcotics were seized across the country since 2016. The items include 76.55 billion pesos worth of shabu. Moreover, a total of 1,156 drug dens and 19 clandestine shabu laboratories were dismantled from July 2016 to April 2022, while over 340,000 individuals were arrested. At least 25,061 out of the 42,045 villages are now drug cleared, 6,574 are drug unaffected, drug free, and 10,410 have yet to be cleared of illegal drugs. The consolidated report showed 6,248 suspects died during the 236,620 anti illegal drugs operations. The Presidential Communications Operations Office or PCOO has bagged a Philippine Quill Award for launching the Virtual Presser. It is an interactive online platform that promotes engagements of foreign media with the Philippine government. The program aims to bridge the gap between the Philippine government and foreign correspondents. It was also repurposed for many other virtual pressers from other government agencies. The PCOO received an award under the Communications Management category during the 19th Philippines Quills Award. The Philippine Quill is considered the country's most prestigious awards program that honors the best communications program, tools, and research projects across various industries. For PCOO Secretary Martin Andanar, his successor, Attorney Trixie Cruz Angeles, is perfect for the job. Andana said Angeles, who is also a radio commentator, will overcome all the challenges that would come her way as the new communications chief. He is also positive that Angeles would adopt his reform initiatives to improve the services of the state media. Andanar earlier instructed the transition team of the PCOO to ensure the proper turnover of power to the incoming press secretary prior to meeting Angeles. Andanar said he will take a two-month respite after his term ends in June to make up for lost time with family and would rejoin private media after. Still ahead, more hospitals prepare for the possible outbreak of monkeypox. The Philippines backs the worldwide call for safe and healthy workplaces. We'll be back after a quick break. Keep it here on the Pinay Newsroom. Hi everyone, James Deacon here. The COVID-19 vaccines are finally here and the government wants to make sure the vaccines reach us. So let's do our part by making sure that we get registered to be included in the vaccination list of our LGU. You can register right in the comfort and safety of your own homes through your LGU's online registration platform. And you can also register on site in the vaccination venues or through your barangay. Remember, getting vaccinated is the first step towards ending this pandemic. So let's do our part as disciplined citizens. Bida ang may disiplina. Magpaharehistrot, magpabakuna para sa ligtas na pamilya, ligtas na bayan.
The Food and Drug Administration says that while there is no vaccine yet against monkeypox, the existing jobs on smallpox may work. The FDA says monkeypox may also be prevented by observing the minimum public health standards, such as wearing of best-fitted masks. Hand washing and physical distancing can also prevent monkeypox transmission. For its part, the Department of Health is implementing the four-door strategy to prevent the entry of monkeypox into the country. It is also working with its stakeholders should the virus get its way. Meanwhile, more hospitals in the country are also preparing for a possible outbreak of monkeypox. The president of the Private Hospitals Association of the Philippines said that although no case has so far been reported, their members and relevant government agencies are now on high alert. No, kasi ang gagawin na lang po namin, of course, ay i-isolate po namin. Na dati na naman po namin ginagawa. Meron man po tayong mga isolation wards. And then, of course, dahil ito po ay reportable case, bagong kaso sa atin ito, ay re-report po agad natin ito sa Department of Health. Na ang binabantayan po natin dyan ay yung fever, yung mga muscle pains, yung po mga nagkapagkakaroon ng limpa dinopati or yung mga kulani po. And then of course yung rashes po, na typical po dun sa supposed din na monkeypox. The Department of Transportation pointed out the significant improvements at the Nino Aquino International Airport. Before the COVID-19 pandemic hit in March 2020, the Air Carriers Association of the Philippines reported that the airline's running on-time performance average was 83%. This, it says, is a far cry from the previous 40% in 2016. This is in contrast to the unfavorable rating and unsubstantiated claims of the bounce luggage storage, which compiled reviews aggregated via the blog businessclass.com and Skytrax. According to the study, Naia obtained the worst scoring in terms of the number of destinations, on-time performance, and rating from Skytrax. The DOTR says the number of destinations is dictated by and determined through bilateral and air services negotiations. Under President Rodrigo Duterte and Secretary Artugade, Naia was able to stamp out long-standing issues such as the infamous Laglagbala extortion scheme and Bukas Bagahe scheme. The Philippine Air Force is conducting investigations to determine the exact cause of the crash landing of its Hermes 900 unmanned aerial vehicle while about to land at the Lumbia Airport, Cagayan de Oro City, last Saturday. BAF spokesperson Colonel Maynard Mariano said that the UAV took off at around 9.30 a.m. to perform a functional check flight. At around 11.46 a.m. near the end of the test, Communications with the UAV was cut. The Hermes 900 UAV crash landed in a vegetated area where it was last confirmed to have lost contact. No civilian casualties and damage of properties were reported. The Hermes 900 is an Israeli medium-sized, multi-payload, medium-altitude, long-endurance UAV designed for tactical missions. In 2020, the PAF received three Hermes 900 and one Hermes 450 unmanned aerial systems as part of a contract worth around $175 million. The Philippines joins the world in pushing for the inclusion of safe and healthy working conditions in the International Labor Organization's Framework of Fundamental Principles and Rights at Work. Labor Secretary Silvestre Bellu III led the Philippine delegation in the 110th session of the International Labor Conference or ILC in Geneva. The conference will also discuss the social and solidarity economy and the international standardization of apprenticeship. The ILC kicked off on May 27 and will culminate on June 11. The ILO Declaration on Fundamental Principles and Rights at Work commits its member states to respect and promote principles and rights of workers. These are freedom of association and the effective recognition of the right to collective bargaining, the elimination of forced labor, the abolition of child labor, and the elimination of discrimination. 
A total of 13 families equivalent to 49 individuals are given the opportunity to start anew as the Balik Probinsya Bagong Pag-asa program helps them go home to Mindanao. BP2 staff welcomed today the beneficiaries at the BP2 Depot in Agham Road in Quezon City. They are scheduled to depart Manila on Tuesday, May 30, bound for Agusan del Sur, Iligan, Lanao del Norte, Bukidnon, and Cagayante Oro. Another batch of 38 individuals are scheduled to depart Manila on Thursday, June 2, bound for Cebu, Bohol, Negros Occidental, and Iloilo. The BP2 is a program of the national government addressing congestion in Metro Manila by encouraging and helping dwellers, especially informal settlers, to return to their home provinces. More stories from the newsroom. Regional police chiefs are urged to boost security following the recent bombings in Region 12. A face-to-face -face job fair opens for workers affected by the pandemic in Iligan City. Details ahead, stay with the PNA Newsroom. Follow me, Jonas Paul, para sa kampanyang Disiplina Muna na pinangungunahan ng DILG. Bakit ba kailangan magparehistro sa pagpapabakuna laban sa COVID-19? Mahalaga magparehistro dahil ito ang unang step sa pagpapabakuna laban sa COVID-19. May tatlong pamamaraan upang makapagrehistro ang isang Pilipino na nais mabakunahan. Una, ang online registration sa inyong local government unit o LGU. Pangalawa, ang pagpunta sa mga vaccination centers at pagkuha ng registration form. At pakikipag-ugnayan sa mga pinuno ng barangay o sa mga barangay health center. Tandaan, online, sa mga vaccination site o sa mga barangay health centers ang pagpaparehistro sa pagpapabakuna kontra COVID-19. Muli ako po si Paolo Medjones, disiplina muna ambasador na nagpapaalala, huwag matakot magpabakuna. Bida ang may disiplina. Magparehistro at magpabakuna para ligtas ang pamilya, ligtas ang bayan. Disiplinadong Pilipino ay rehistrado para maging bakunado. All regional directors of the Philippine National Police have been reminded to intensify security in their respective areas following two bombing incidents in South Cotabato and Sultan Kudarat last week. Major General Valeriano De Leon, PNP Director for Operations, condemned the bombing of a passenger bus that injured two people in Coronadal City, South Cotabato on Thursday. On the same day, another explosion occurred at a vacant lot in Barangay New Carmen, Takorong City in Sultan Kudarat, but no one was injured. De Leon said unit commanders were directed to conduct inspections in all transport terminals, major thoroughfares and roads, target hardening of vital installations and other public places and beef up intelligence gathering. De Leon said the PNP National Headquarters is ready to deploy additional troops if necessary to run after the groups involved. Over 200 decommissioned fighters of the Moro Islamic Liberation Front finished the Technical Vocational Education Training Program in Datupaglas, Maguindanao. Ibang sa Moro Autonomous Region in Muslim Mindanao's Ministry of Basic, Higher and Technical Education provided graduates with training support for transportation and other expenses incurred during the livelihood training. Among the courses they finished were bread and pastry production, electrical installation, dressmaking, crop planting, and shielded metal arc welding. 
Office of the Presidential Advisor on Peace Reconciliation and Unity Chief Secretary Carlito Galvez said the training package furthers the promotion of peace apparatus and strengthens its mechanism that would support the former MILF members. President Rodrigo Duterte signed Executive Order 79 in April 2019 for the implementation of the Annex on Normalization under the CAD, bringing together at least 17 government agencies to help the commissioned MILF combatants. The Department of Human Settlements and Urban Development is set to construct more evacuation centers within the provinces of Marinduque and Leyte. One evacuation center will each rise in Mokpog and Torrijos in Marinduque and Palo, Hilongos and San Isidro, the Leyte towns previously battered by strong typhoons. DHSUD Secretary Eduardo Del Rosario said more evacuation centers will boost the country's overall disaster preparedness as ordered by President Rodrigo Duterte. Marinduque Governor Presbitero Velasco said that the evacuation centers will be pivotal in saving people's lives. Leyte Governor Leopoldo Domenico Petilia said evacuation centers will be a great help to Leytenos, especially those still reeling from the adverse impacts of previous typhoons. In news overseas, Russia's defense ministry said that the Lyman city in the Danyust region of eastern Ukraine had fallen under the full control of Russian forces. The ministry also said high-precision missiles hit a Ukrainian military post in the Bakhmut city and a regional defense unit command center in Solidar city. The Russian air defense system shot down a Ukrainian helicopter as well as 18 Ukrainian drones at different locations. At least 4,000 civilians have been killed and over 4,700 injured in Ukraine since Russia's war on its neighbor began on February 24. Over 6.7 million people have fled to other countries, while more than 7.7 .7 million have been internally displaced, according to the UN Refugee Agency. Meanwhile, German and French leaders called on the Russian president to agree on an immediate ceasefire and a withdrawal of troops from Ukraine on Saturday. German Chancellor Olaf Scholz and French President Emmanuel Macron spoke with the Russian President Vladimir Putin over the phone for 18 minutes. Scholz and Macron urged Putin to talk with Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky and to find a diplomatic solution to the conflict. The province of Antigua had its time in the spotlight as tourists savored Antiqueño cuisine in a week-long cultural fair in Iloilo City. During the Antigua Day held at the fiestas in the city, fair visitors frequented the food section featuring the province's heritage dishes. Among Antigua's native delicacies are puto tapon, steamed rice cake made from fermented dough, Ibos or steamed sticky rice blended with coconut milk and lechon. Antigua also promoted its tourist spots such as the white sand beaches in Kaluya and the Sibalong Natural Park and the songs in the Visayan dialect Kinaraya. Fiestas in the city aims to promote culture and tourism in the new normal. Negros Occidental, Iloilo City, Iloilo Province, Guimaras, Bacolod City, Aklan, and Capiz are also part of the week-long fair launched by the Department of Tourism, Western Visayas. In Iligan City, over 700 jobs were up for grabs at the Labor Department's face-to-face -face job fair opened for workers affected by the pandemic. More on this from Lou Antonio. The Public Employment Service Office of Iligan City, in collaboration with the Department of Labor and Employment Lanao del Norte Provincial Field Office and the Philippine Overseas Employment Administration, held a two-day job fair in a mall in the city. Over 700 local and overseas jobs were available at the face-to-face -face job fair. The uh, job fair is in the plan that we implement to improve the impact of the pandemic crisis. We had invited 16 agencies, uh, 13 of them are local 
and ng tulo sa overseas. No? In-demand local jobs include dispatchers, drivers, mechanics, electricians, painters, cleaners, welders, tile setters, repairmen, and call center agents. Meanwhile, top overseas job posts were sales agents, cooks, beauticians, mechanical engineers, laborers, assistants, bartenders, and packers. Ang mong commitment, uh, mutabang mi, labi na karong pandemic, na makahatag o makaprovide na disente na trabaho sa atong mga aplikan. So, mamampun ng mandato sa dole, kung hatag o disente na trabaho na fair sa tanan. Wala'y ginapaburan nato. So, tanan aplikan nato na ay equal na opportunity na makapangita o uh, trabaho. Since the start of the pandemic, Dole has conducted job fairs to help individuals who lost their jobs. Dole also implements tulong panghanap buhay sa ating disadvantaged or displaced workers program and COVID-19 adjustment measures program. For the PNA Newsroom, Lu Antonio of PA Iligan City and Lano del Norte. Let's take another look at today's biggest stories. Cabinet officials showcase the government's achievements as throughout President Rodrigo Duterte's term in the Duterte Legacy Summit. More hospitals prepare for the possible outbreak of monkeypox. The Philippines backs the worldwide call for safe and healthy workplaces. Regional police chiefs are urged to boost security following the recent bombings in Region 12. As Filipinos, we all have a vital role to play in preventing the spread of COVID-19. So remember, wear face masks and face shields. Wash your hands often. Practice safe physical distancing. Go out only for essential reasons. And get vaccinated as soon as possible to protect ourselves, our families, and the community. Together, we can beat COVID-19. Thank you for watching another episode of the PNA Newsroom. For more news content, check our webpage or log on to the Philippine News Agency's Facebook and Twitter accounts. For more stories about the government and how it serves Filipinos, look for these hashtags in all of our social media platforms and websites. We are shown on the pages of the PCOO and its attached agencies. You may also watch us on television on PTV4 and IBC13. And that's your daily dose of the biggest stories that you need to know from the PNA Newsroom. We tell stories that inspire change. I'm Marita Mwahe. Stay safe and have a good day.